Good morning. I'm Pastor Evelyn Craighead, and welcome to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that teaches you the truth of God's Word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from Nehemiah chapter 6, and I will be reading verses 1 through 14 from the New King James Version. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at the time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times and I answered them in the same manner. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, it is reported among nations and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem saying there is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come therefore and let us consult together. Then I sent to him saying, no such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid saying their hands will be weakened in the work and it will not be done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterwards, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabil, who was a secret informer, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, Nehemiah said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason, he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way in sin so that they might have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me, that they might shame and disgrace me. My God, remember Sanballat, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these works and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. Nehemiah struggled with plots against him personally. Yes. And as believers, so will we. Amen. People are forever trying to get us to compromise our walk with God. Amen. They are forever trying to get us to disobey God and they are forever trying to get us to fear. Mm -hmm. Therefore, two of the greatest traits a person can have are those of discernment and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And discernment is being able to separate the things of God from the things that are not of God. It's being able to distinguish between good and evil evil, right, and wrong. Amen. It's discerning of spirits. It's the ability to tell whether or not someone is speaking by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. or by a false spirit. Amen. Wisdom is understanding. It's knowledge gained by experience. It's a gift that comes only from God. And wisdom is a characteristic of God. Amen. If you can discern between good and evil and then 
then make wise decisions based on that knowledge. You can exercise control over your life, doing good and reaping good. Amen. You can live a fruitful, productive, and victorious life. Hallelujah. But having the ability to discern and make wise decisions does not free us from the problems and difficulties of life. Amen. As believers, while we live in this corruptible world, there will always be both spiritual and human forces who oppose us. Mm -hmm. No matter how gracious and kind we may be, some people just won't like us Amen. and they will shun us wanting no contact with us whatsoever. Some people may even be bitter toward us, mm -hmm. hating and despising us, while others may abuse, assault, or seek to do us bodily harm. There will also be a barrage of temptations and trials that confront us from one day to the next. But when we're opposed by others mm -hmm. or attacked spiritually through enticing temptations or difficult trials, we need the ability to discern between what is true and false mm -hmm. and what is good and bad. Amen. Then we need the wisdom and the courage to know how to respond and conquer the situation. And the constant need for discernment and wisdom is the practical subject of this passage of Scripture today. Nehemiah's opponents had failed miserably in their attempt in to derail his rebuilding of Jerusalem and its walls. Therefore they changed their strategy. Instead of launching disruptive strikes against the construction project itself, they sought to attack Nehemiah personally. They were now desperate because the wall was near completion. And if it was ever finished, they would lose all hope of continuing to control the people of Judah and to profit off of them commercially. And their authority over the area would be greatly diminished. Furthermore, they would never be able to attack Jerusalem militarily because the Persian king himself had appointed Nehemiah to rebuild the city and its walls. Mm -hmm. Thus, once completed, the wall would allow the Jewish returnees to become more settled and grow stronger year by year. In coming decades, there was even the possibility that the Jews could become more powerful than the surrounding nations and begin to exert control over them. And so in desperation, the officials of the surrounding nations plotted to assassinate Nehemiah and to discredit him among the people. And three different schemes were launched against Nehemiah. God's lay servant, schemes that are still being used today by the enemies of God's people. Thus, my subject for this morning is an urgent need for discernment and wisdom. Amen. Verses 1 through 4 says, Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at the time I had not hung the doors in the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Why while I leave it and go down to you. But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Nehemiah needed discernment and wisdom because the first scheme used against Nehemiah was the temptation to compromise by leading him to cooperate with unbelievers. Mm. And compromise is to cooperate, to agree, which is a scheme that's often used by Satan and the enemies of believers. Mm. As a believer, if you can be led to compromise, if you can be led to 
cooperate with the worldly of this earth, the ungodly of this earth, the unsaved of this earth, mm -hmm. your testimony will soon be discredited. Amen. But despite all the opposition, Nehemiah and the returned Jews accomplished an impossible feat. They completely finished the wall. Only the gates remained to be hung, and they did this in 52 days. Amen. But as soon as the wall was completed, news was immediately carried by some spies to the leaders of the surrounding nations who stood opposed to the resettlement and rebuilding project. And these leaders were Sanballat, mm -hmm. Tobiah, Geshem the Ahab, and the remaining enemies who had formed an alliance, a coalition against Nehemiah and the Jews. Mm -hmm. Disappointed that their early attempts to stop the rebuilding project had miserably failed, these enemies now reversed their tactics. Mm -hmm. Instead of standing opposed to the rebuilding project, they sought to lead Nehemiah into thinking that they wanted to compromise. Therefore, they began to discuss the differences with him supposedly to work out some kind of mutual agreement. And to initiate this scheme, they sent an invitation for Nehemiah to meet them on neutral ground, a site in one of the villages in the plain of Ono, which was about 20 miles from Jerusalem. And from all appearances, it seemed that these opponents finally wanted to make peace and establish economic trade with the Jews. But Nehemiah saw through their scheme. Mm -hmm. That was his discernment Amen. and wisdom, sensing that they were seeking to get him alone in order to kill him. Therefore, to protect himself, Nehemiah de devised a reply that would either prove their sincerity or expose their deception. And so he simply stated that he couldn't leave the work unsupervised because the project was at a critical state mm -hmm. and it was too important for him to leave at that time. And of course, Nehemiah discerned foul play. He suspected foul play. Nevertheless, he was leaving the door open for his opponents to suggest meeting in Jerusalem just in case they were sincere or had a change of heart. And as he suspected, just as he had discerned, mm -hmm. the enemy's insincerity was exposed. Amen. Rather than suggesting a meeting in Jerusalem, they repeatedly sent him the same message and they sent it four times. Four successive times they sent the very same message. Yeah. And if you think about it, one of the major tactics that Satan and his followers use to attack is that of compromise. As a believer, if you can be led to compromise, mm -hmm. your testimony is ruined. You become discredited and the name of Christ is dishonored. Amen. Compromise can only be good when it's based on moral and spiritual truth and in obeying the laws of a nation or the laws of God. Amen. But when compromise is immoral, illegal, or disobedient mm -hmm. to society's laws and God's laws, then it becomes sinful and evil. For example, how many of us have been lured or seduced to compromise by engaging in immoral or illicit sexual acts or adultery or stealing, cheating, or deceiving others? How many of us have been lured or seduced to compromise by joining the crowd and smoking and drinking alcoholic beverages or taking drugs, all of which damage the human body? How many of us have been lured or seduced to compromise by joining the crowd in immodest behavior or dress that can lead to unwanted advances and assaults? And how many of us have been lured or seduced to compromise by engaging in unlawful or violent behavior? Compromising with those who walk in sin and wickedness will destroy your testimony for Christ. Yeah. And sometimes it may even destroy your life. Amen. Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says, For what profit is it to a man 
If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? All right. Compromising with the world, compromising with those who walk in sin and wickedness, is that what you really want? Mm. Do you really want to exchange your soul for this sinful world? Mm. Because compromising with the world will destroy your life. Amen. Verses 5 through 9 says, Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. In it, in it was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king, so come therefore and let us consult together. Then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say are being done, but you invented them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, their hands will be weakened in the work and it will not be done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah needed discernment and wisdom because the second scheme used against Nehemiah and the Jews was the slandering of Nehemiah's name, spreading rumors and lies about him. Yeah. And Nehemiah's opponents were not going to give up because they were desperate to maintain their authority and economic control over the territory of Judah. Somehow, some way they had to keep the Jews from hanging all the gates which was all that was needed to finish the walls and from rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. Amen. When Sanballat and the other opponents realized that Nehemiah wasn't going to leave Jerusalem to meet with them alone, they again switched their line of attack. For the fifth time they sent Nehemiah a letter but this time they changed the contents of the letter and they sent it unsealed mm. and in that day and time sending a letter that was unsealed was most unusual because when an official letter was sent it was always rolled up tied and sealed so it would only be opened and read by the person to whom it was being sent but in this case, Sanballat sent an unsealed letter to Nehemiah. And obviously, his purpose was to have the letter read by the messenger and many others along the route so that they would naturally spread lies contained in the letter. And the letter listed two major charges against Nehemiah. Sanballat charged Nehemiah with plotting a rebellion against Persia for the purpose of setting himself up as king of Judah. He even accused the godly governor of appointing certain prophets to move among the people throughout Jerusalem, proclaiming him to be the appointed king. And of course, the charge that Nehemiah was revolting against Persia to establish himself as king was a false and vicious lie. Sam Ballot's plot was to spread the rumor so that the returned Jews would become discouraged and stop the rebuilding project. Mm -hmm. Sam Ballot's letter also warned Nehemiah that this report would be taken to the king of Persia. Therefore, it was essential for Nehemiah to meet with him and his associates. Knowing that the slander and lies about him were being spread throughout Judah, Nehemiah could have easily buckled under the pressure and met with his opponents. He could have easily faced the enemy to defend himself against the false charges and Nehemiah knew that they were determined to kill him. Nevertheless, he was forced to answer the false accusations. If the slander and rumors were left unchecked, his reputation would be ruined and discredited among the people. And the Persian king would quickly have him arrested and most likely executed. Subsequently, the rebuilding of Jerusalem would be stopped in its tracks. Yeah. But to prevent the catastrophic events from taking place, Nehemiah 
carefully thought through the best way to respond to the malicious lies and rumors. Okay. And one fact stood out above all the others. The slander was totally false. There was no truth whatsoever to the charges. Mm -hmm. Thus Nehemiah concluded that his best response was to forcefully deny the slander and lies, to boldly charge the enemy with lying and deception, and to pray for strength. Nehemiah knew that his opponents were using intimidation to weaken his and his workers' hands in order to stop the construction project. Yeah. So Nehemiah simply turned to the Lord, yeah. asking him to strengthen their hands because the answer to these men's intimidation was to be strengthened by God. Amen. And if you think about it, spreading slander and lies is a vicious behavior that causes causes intense pain that often destroys a per person's reputation and character. Mm -hmm. Slander and lies can cause all kinds of terrible consequences. Yeah. It can cause separation and divorce, broken friendships, loss of employment, or removal from office. Mm -hmm. Slander and lies can cause financial difficulty mm -hmm. or bankruptcy, yeah. failed negotiations, mm -hmm. broken agreements, and unbearable friction at home, school, work, and even church. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18 says, Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. Wow. Slander and lies are two of the most terrible evils that people can commit because the results are always harmful and often devastating. Yeah. And gossip is just as harmful as slander and lies because it's gossip that spreads the rumors, slander, and lies. Mm. Therefore, the best answer to false accusations is to have strong character and to be a person of integrity. Amen. If you are a person of integrity, most people won't accept malicious slander against you because if you have a reputation of strong character and integrity people will tend to believe you not what someone says about you mm -hmm. thus when lies and slander are used to attack you you need to follow in the footsteps of Nehemiah you need to deny the slander mm -hmm. you need to charge the enemy with lying and deception and you need to cry out to the Lord for strength but the underlying point is that you must be a person of strong character and integrity you must walk in the truth of God's holy word obeying his his commandments and living a righteous life before the people. You must be a strong testimony to the righteousness of the Lord and this is your best defense against slander and lies. Amen. Verses 10 through 14 says, Afterward I came to the house of Shemaiah the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill Kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there such as I who should go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way in sin so that they might have cause for an evil plot, that they might reproach me, that they might shame and disgrace me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. Nehemiah needed discernment and wisdom because the third scheme of Nehemiah's enemies was to lead Nehemiah to act cowardly and to disobey God. Mm. It was a clever scheme to discredit Nehemiah and maybe to even assassinate him. The enemy hired the priest, Shemaiah, to deceive Nehemiah and to lead him into a trap within the temple. 
But notice that Shemaiah was home locked behind closed doors and that Nehemiah went to Shemaiah's home to see him. Mm. Apparently, Shemaiah has sent word for Nehemiah to come because there was a threat against the governor's life. But when Nehemiah arrived, Shemaiah warned Nehemiah of the assassination plot that was planned for that very night. And Shemaiah next suggested that they hide in the temple within the holy place itself. While Nehemiah had initially trusted Shemaiah as one of the priestly leaders, he immediately detected a hoax mm -hmm. or a plot when Shemaiah suggested that they hide in the house of God. Right. Thus, Nehemiah refused to flee and hide in the temple as Shemaiah had suggested. And he forcefully responded, he could not disobey God by entering the holy place because only priests could enter the holy place of the temple. And to hide in the place, a sign for a priest only, mm -hmm. would have been a grievous sin against the Lord. Amen. Besides, he couldn't act cowardly by running away from the task God had given him. Amen. Because of Shemaiah's suggestion, Nehemiah knew he discerned that his enemies, Tobiah and Sanballat, had hired this priest to entrap him. By exposing the plot of assassination, they had hoped to strike so much fear in Nehemiah that he would hide out in the house of God. They, thus they would be able to discredit Nehemiah's name because he had committed this terrible sin by defiling the temple of God. Amen. But sometime later, when Nehemiah was all alone, guess what he did? He sought the Lord in prayer. Amen. He asked the Lord to execute true justice against Tobiah and Sanballat as well as against some prophets who hadn't been mentioned until now but who had opposed God's work. And notice that the prophetess Noah Daya is named, but just who she and the other prophets were isn't known. But the fact that they and the priest Shemaiah opposed Nehemiah shows just how strong the opposition to Nehemiah was. And this godly layman was apparently opposed by a body of political, business, and even religious leaders. Mm. Nevertheless, Nehemiah stood fast. He was immovable and he persevered until the end, yeah. completing the great task God had assigned him. Hallelujah. Think about what's being said here because the lesson for us is clear. We must not act cowardly and we must not disobey God. Mm -hmm. And a coward is the person who runs away from trouble. The person who avoids the difficulties of life that arise. A coward is the person who fails to undertake the task or the assignment he or she has been given or is responsible for. Mm -hmm. And a coward has weak character that's clearly exposed when he backs off or runs away from a difficult situation. Yeah. As a believer, when you act cowardly, you damage your testimony and you dishonor the name of the Lord. Amen. When any of us fail to stand up for righteousness, mm -hmm. people know that our profession of faith is weak and that our hearts are not genuine. Yeah. Thus our testimony for Christ suffers and suffers some e individuals even look upon us as being hypocritical. If we profess Christ mm. and the importance of living righteously, yeah. yet we accept wicked behavior and seldom speak up for righteousness, we're acting cowardly. Amen. We're running away from the opportunity to bear strong testimony to God, mm -hmm. to his commandments, yes. and to righteous behavior. When we disobey God, mm -hmm. our testimony is truly discredited and being caught or seen committing sin always brings sh sin upon the profession of Christ. Yes. And sin always dishonors the name of the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 25 verse Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, mm -hmm. 
But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. This is what the word of God says about fearing the unbelievers of the world and acting cowardly. And some examples of cowardly behavior found in scripture is the cowardly behavior of the ten spies that were sent into the land of Canaan. The cowardly behavior of most of Gideon's army. The cowardly behavior of Israel's army as it faced the giant Goliath. The cowardly behavior of the Lord's disciples when he was being arrested. The cowardly behavior of most people during the ministry of Christ when he was so fiercely opposed. Mm -hmm. The cowardly behavior of many religious leaders who claim to believe in Christ but refuse to confess him because of their fear of other religious leaders. Mm -hmm. And the cowardly behavior of Peter when confronted by a number of religious leaders. But listen to what God's holy word says about disobedience. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 15 says, However, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you as it was against your fathers. Nehemiah struggled with plots against him, personal plots, which shows us that there's an urgent need for discernment and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because people will always scheme to get you to compromise and cooperate with worldly unbelievers, yes. with the ungodly, with mm -hmm. those that have not been born again, with those that are not saved. People will scheme to slander you and spread rumors and lies about you. And people will scheme to get you to act cowardly mm -hmm. and disobey God. But don't do it. Amen. Walk in the gift of discernment and wisdom that God has blessed you with. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word today, Father God. Help us to walk in discernment and wisdom that comes from you as a gift from you, Father God. Now, Father God, as we prepare to leave this place but never your presence, I ask that you will bless us and keep us, that you will make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us, and Lord, lift up your countenance upon us and give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen.